I'm ranking all 11 ways to get around Washington, D.C. from worst to best. Hello, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, I share my best tips, tricks, and hacks for exploring Washington, DC. And over at TripHacksDC.com, you'll find info about tours, and more. One cool thing about visiting DC is that there are so many different ways of getting around. But that also creates the paradox of choice. Which ones are worth using and which ones should you skip? I'm going to rank every transportation option here from worst to best. So make sure to stick around to the end to find out who won. And I'm curious, what do you think about my picks? This is really a ranking for folks who are visiting DC. So for folks who live here, I think the ranking might be a little bit different. But hey, I'm curious regardless. So after you're done watching the video, leave me a comment and let me know. With that said, let's get started. Let's start with the worst option driving. I don't recommend first time visitors get a rental car at the airport. And if you're driving your own car from back home, you can check out my video about parking in DC, find a garage and leave it there during the trip. The reason that driving is a bad option for visitors is because driving is stressful here. There's traffic, there's aggressive drivers, and we don't exactly have the most intuitive street grid. And even though it's kind of a myth that there's nowhere in DC to park, it is true that there's almost no free places to park, especially near the main sites. So for visitors, I think driving winds up being more of a burden than a convenience. Next up are shared mopeds. These are a relatively new way of getting around. They are electric powered moped bikes that you rent in an app and pay for by the minute. Right now, there are two brands, Revel, which are the blue ones, and Lime, which are the green ones. I think these are better than driving because they are way easier to park, but they're meant to be driven in traffic at relatively high speeds. So if you're visiting from out of town, don't really know your way around, and aren't that familiar with the city, I think this could be a potentially dangerous situation. So for most visitors, I would skip these. Next on the list are tourist buses. Now, these are okay for some people, but here is my updated opinion on these in 2021. If you just want transportation around the National Mall, you can ride the Circulator bus for much cheaper. If you want a guided tour of the National Mall, a walking tour will get you up close to the sites and is generally just a much better experience. So the tourist buses have a pretty narrow niche. And I'll also add that the tourist buses are generally owned by big chain tour companies. And I'm a firm believer that in 2021, going with local tour companies will give you a much superior experience. The next transportation mode is the water taxi. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the water taxi is pretty fun, but it's also more of an attraction than it is transportation. For example, the water taxi between the wharf and Georgetown isn't the fastest way to get between those two places. And it's definitely not the cheapest way, but it does give you a chance to see the Kennedy Center and the Lincoln Memorial from the water. So that's admittedly kind of cool. So just like the monorail at a theme park, it may technically be transportation, but it's also a ride. Next up are the electric kick scooters that proliferated several years ago. I even made an entire video about how to ride these scooters. I mean, they're okay. They're kind of fun, but they're also pretty expensive compared to other transportation modes. For example, right now, Lyft scooters cost 39 cents per minute plus a $1 unlock fee. That means a 30 minute ride will cost you $12.70. And that's just for a single scooter. Imagine if you're in a group of four, that's 50 bucks right there. Compare that to say Capital Bike Share, where a 30 minute ride will only cost you $2 per person. And kind of a secret about these scooters is that they're not actually that fast. Yeah, they're electric, but they're limited in how fast they can go. And personally, I get kind of annoyed when I get stuck behind a scooter on my regular bike. Okay, now we're moving into the transportation modes that I do kind of like. First is Metrobus. If you didn't know, there are two bus systems in Washington, DC, Metrobus and Circulator Bus. Metrobus is run by WMATA, the same folks who run the Metro Rail. It covers all of DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And their routes generally better serve locals than they do visitors. That's not to say visitors can't successfully use Metrobus, but figuring out which routes are good to use when you're here can be a little challenging. So for that reason, I think most visitors wind up not using it. The next transportation mode is a hired ride. This could be Uber, Lyft, or a good old fashioned red taxi. This is admittedly a pretty good way for visitors to get around, 
because it's so easy. Just open up your app, type in where you wanna go, and like magic, you get taken there. However, one thing I've noticed over the last few years is that some people are starting to over rely on hired rides and it's all they use when they visit. And now that both Uber and Lyft are publicly traded companies and their shareholders probably want them to make some money, I think the era of super cheap rides is over. Now, when it comes to public transportation, I'm a big fan of this next one the Circulator Bus. Circulator has shorter routes than Metrobus and tends to go to the places where visitors want to go, like the National Mall, Georgetown, and the Wharf. Circulator is also cheaper than the Metrobus. Historically, Circulator Bus only cost $1 per ride, though there was a pilot a few years ago where Circulator was free for an entire summer. Now for my personal favorite way of getting around, Capital Bike Share. I like Capital Bike Share because it's easy, it's efficient and it's cheap. When I give a tour of the National Mall, I usually ride a Capital Bike Share to the meeting spot. And after the tour is over, pick up a Capital Bike Share near the ending spot and ride home, which people find pretty cool. But I didn't put this as number one on the list because I know it's not that popular with visitors. I know this because I made an updated Capital Bike Share video on this channel back in May, and it was by far the worst performing video on this channel in a long time. And look, I get it. If you're not a bike person, you might not wanna use it. If you're a family traveling with kids, it's not really an option. But if you're the type of traveler who can take advantage, it's pretty awesome. Let's face it though, most visitors love riding the Metro. If you live in a place that doesn't have a subway, it's new, it's novel, it's awesome. It's not just transportation, it's part of your travel experience. Metro's great because it's relatively efficient, it's pretty cheap, anyone can ride, but the reason I didn't put this as number one is because it's not 100% reliable. Weekend track work can render certain portions of Metro unrideable, and that's not a great experience for visitors who get unlucky and happen to be here when big track work is happening. Which leads to what I think is the best mode of transportation for visitors, and it is walking. If you're physically able, and yes, I recognize that not everyone is, but if you're physically able, walking is a great way to get places. One change that I've personally made in my life since COVID is that before I even evaluate the other transportation options, I ask, can I walk there? And a lot of times, if the distance is a mile and a half or less, the answer is yes. And so I'll just walk. The beauty of walking is in its simplicity. Whenever I travel, I try to find some time to just walk around because I really believe that walking is the best way to experience a city. It's an experience you're not gonna get if you only travel in a tunnel underground or from the back seat of a car. And it's why when I started Trip Hacks DC tours, I chose to make them walking tours. But hey, we've reached the end of the video and I wanna know what you think. How'd I do with these rankings? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know. And since you made it this far, then I highly recommend another Trip Hacks DC video. So go ahead and click or tap right over here to watch the next one. And if you're coming to DC and interested in signing up for a Trip Hacks DC guided tour, you can click or tap on the Capitol Dome on the left side of my head. That'll send you right over to tripxdc.com where you can see all of the tours that we offer. Enjoy your trip.